And here we are one more time. Tar 18. We're getting old. Yeah. 18. So, uh, what day is today? I have to look at my watch. It's the 13th, Th or 13th, Thursday. Thursday, the 19th. The 19th. The 19th. Okay. I had to look at that myself. Yeah, well, you know, can't keep track of the days. Can't keep track to get, of the nights. Starting to get hectic. Well, it is getting hectic. We got a lot of things going on, and we got the, my tournaments coming up, and you're getting ready to do TAR 25, and then U.S. Open one pocket, U.S. Open 10 ball, TAR 26, mm -hmm. TAR 27, 8, and 9. We're going to announce all those tonight, aren't we? No. We'll okay. go probably. <laughs> We'll have to see. Yeah. Well, I mean, Anyhow, it's yeah. possible TAR 27 could be the winner of 25 Well, and, and you know what we have to do, which we haven't discussed, but I'm going to work on it because I'm going to be out of town here for a couple of days, um, is our ranking list. Yeah. So you I, you should do one. I should do one. Nasty Chad's should do already one. got one. Yep. And uh, we'll ask a couple other mm -hmm. knowledgeable people and just then we'll get together and uh, flip coins. Yeah. We'll make them lag. Sure. Yeah. You know. Well... Anyhow, a lot of news going on this week. Probably the, the biggest one and, the biggest, and really yeah. the saddest one is uh, absolutely my buddy Grady. You know, yeah, it's a, he's he'll be you know, missed. He yeah. was a he was a legend in the game. Oh yeah, I mean he had his influences. Yeah, you know it's really funny. I cannot remember when I met him. Yeah, but I know he was in Alaska. We brought him to Alaska in 1993, mm -hmm. 92, late 92, and I'd known him before. I just can't quite figure out where I met him at. So that's 20 years. You know? I saw him at Derby back in the... Well, the Derby's only 14 years old. Or the first... Or well, I'm not 128 years old like <laughs> yeah, you are you, either. You are really a snot-nosed <laughs> kid, aren't you? <laughs> but I think that was yeah. the first time I ever, in person, saw him. Yeah. And, I, and I know... He actually gave me a short lesson at a pool room called Chalkies in Indianapolis. Yeah. Would have been 04, maybe. Yeah, uh, and then... We actually, first time I ever spent any kind of time with him was at uh, Tar One. Oh yeah, with, that's true. With, with uh, uh, Shane and uh, Corey. Corey and Billy. Yeah. And and yeah. then again at uh, I, I don't know, I guess it would have been Tar Two. Yeah. Harriman and Schmidt, uh, the first one at the Q Olympics. At the Q Olympics in uh, Louisville. And, uh, yeah. I've got a Grady story for you, and this is something about Grady that, you know. It's one of the things I really liked about him is if Grady thought he was right, oh. then by God, <laughs> Grady was right. You know what I mean? And he <laughs> was he was one of those things. What was it? Lou Lamore used to have a line that there's no stopping a man who thinks he's right and keeps on coming. <laughs> um, so anyway, it was Shane and Earl. I, I don't know if I ever told you this. You were there, but I don't. I don't know if you were. You weren't involved with Tar that much then. You were so busy doing presiding nothing. over. <laughs> yeah, doing nothing. I, I, I do nothing. I still, sure stay busy doing it. <laughs> so anyway, it was uh, after the first day of Shane and Earl's match, and Shane had just shellacked Earl the first day. Oh, this is at the Q Olympics. Again, yeah, right. the Q okay. Olympics. Right. Yeah, the sure. very first. It was. Yeah. It would have been Tar Three, I guess. Yeah. Is what 2007. It was. 2007. October. And Grady was doing commentary, and uh, Shane had just shellacked Earl. I think he was winning by nine games or something like that. At least. But what yeah. happened was, it was a freak occurrence, but a ball was coming through. It was like going coming out of the, 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 the rack and going like two rails in the corner and kicking the tin ball on the side. It did this like three or four times. Wow. I mean, it was just, it was complete fluke, just yeah. a total fluke. Earl was losing his mind, you know. I mean, just what's going on? And uh, so anyway, Shane just made Earl look pretty bad the first day. And uh, that next morning, we're sitting there, you know, just in the main room. Uh, eating like a Danish or something like that. I am. And Grady comes up and he said, you know, uh, I talked to Earl and I was thinking about what happened last night. Uh, and, and I just, uh, I've decided that what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to take away, it was actually maybe five games. We're going to take away those five games that Shane made the 10 ball on the break and we're just going to start today with a score of, you know, whatever those five <laughs> games are. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I was, and the thing of it was, you know, here's Grady freaking Matthews, man. This is the third match I've ever done. You know, yeah. I mean, this guy's a legend, right? Oh, yes. 
Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's it's not like you know what do you say? And, and finally, I was just like, Grady, we can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's like if if a football team gets lucky in the first half, you don't take touchdowns away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it got a little heated, you know. Yeah. But and I saw that side of Grady, but you know, he had that fire. And you know, you look at all the. Uh, you look at all the stuff that that guy has done, man, from the role in The Color of Money, which will be timeless forever, yeah. and then, you know, the commentary, obviously, which is will influence people for as long as The Legends, you did the Legends series. You know, the stuff like yeah. he did with the tournament. My, this is one of my favorite things, and him, Mark and I talk about it a lot. A lot of people may not remember this, but how's this for smooth? Grady had a tournament. Was it in Reno? $1,000 entry? Oh, this is the big one. This was in January of, two th of 1993. Right. Yeah, at was the it Flamingo. In Reno? Yes, it was. It was in Reno. Right. Yeah. It was a thousand dollar entry fee, but as soon Actually, as you, it was eleven hundred dollars. Okay, eleven hundred dollar entry fee, and you paid it up front. But when you got to Reno, was it when you got there? No. Nope. When you got knocked out of the tour tournament, you got eleven hundred. The first, the last place. You got a thousand dollars, right? Got a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Actually, if you go to Facebook, Grady Matthews, mm -hmm. you'll see him in a picture, and it's got uh, Julian from Accustat's staff, mm -hmm. and it's got uh, this banner in the background, and it says $141,000. That's the banner mm -hmm. from that turn. So that picture was taken at the Flamingo. That's cool. We had seven people from Alaska go down there. And what well, was interesting because, I, it, it, you know, well, what's wrong with that? I just You're, can't help it, man. Alaska. Well, Grady had come up there in 92, and he was yeah. late 92. And that's when, when he was up there is when um, Richie Florence either had a stroke or died. I think he had a stroke there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, when he was up there. I mean, when Grady was up there. But it was, it was a great tournament. So he got the Were you there? Yeah. Were you at it? Yeah, yeah, we played. That's where I met Irvalino. Uh, uh, Ed Kelly won that tournament. No shit. Yeah, he's just, that's the third generation, third decade that he won a tournament. Cornbread came in second, I think. Oh, wow. What a. You job. had a field there. This was 108 players. Jesus. It, a strong, strong the field. One pocket tournament? One pocket tournament, laid on global tables. They're a little soft, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, the main reason, you're going to laugh, you're going to love this one. It's an Alaskan story, but the main reason why that tournament didn't go back is because Stu Ritchie from Anchorage, Alaska, Beat him out of ninety-five thousand dollars playing blackjack. Mm -hmm. Got absolutely shit faced. Poured the drinks. They spilled the drinks and was rude to the player. But that's okay. That's when you're drunk and, and yeah. you know, they finally just said you're done. But I thought the casino was really wrong. They got all the action they could handle. They just didn't take didn't it down. Come out but the they, way they got thought. the action. Right. Yeah. And there was huge craps action. Yeah, huge. I can imagine what those you kind know, of with guys, those guys in the building. Yeah. Oh, geez. You know, and it was it was an amazing event. And and bugs came in. Bugs arrived late. The tournament's already started, just just getting started. And Grady says, Bugs, you're finally here. And he says, I don't know. He says, all right, players, do you want to let Bugs in or not? And you know, everybody said, let him in. Yeah. Now, here's, here's one of the most feared players. Yeah, right. But that's the camaraderie and the type of a, yeah. event it was. Right, it was a right. great event. Yeah. Great event. Yeah. 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 No, Grady, you know, you look at his legacy and, oh, and yeah, what he's he done and from his writing. Uh, it's just, you know, and he's one of the guys that, you know, he, 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 some players don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to give up any information. Oh, he gave uh, it all up. Yeah. And, and he, he, he brought a lot of people into the game and, and, you know, expanded a, a lot of people's knowledge. Without him, there wouldn't be one pocket today. I mean, not anywhere near in the I agree form. with that. You For, know, yeah, and, him and, and yeah, and, he's, you know, with his promotion of it and he, his he was advocacy. He out there by himself, basically, yeah. for 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark Estes, that works for us, mm -hmm. is, was, is from Colorado Springs, and Grady had a room there for years. Mm -hmm. And it was just awesome. And he's, you know, I, and if you go to uh, Antique Billiards in Colorado Springs, on the wall, they got a picture of Grady Matthews for, governor, or for mayor or for city council. <laughs> <laughs> he ran for city council, Colorado Springs. But here's huh. typical Grady. They're playing pool. I think his room was on like Platt Avenue or something, you know, and it was, they're rolling dice every night. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, you know, the cops kind of say, you know, Grady, you can't be doing that with a liquor license. He says, how come? He says, well, because you just can't do it. So he walks over the wall, hands them their liquor license, says, here. Just gave them the liquor license, says, now I can keep doing it, you know. Yeah. 
Because you, you, you made know, so much off the dice yeah, he and made, the cards. I mean, that's how he was just, he, he'd just make a decision. Yeah. And there were some posts on uh, one of the AZ things that, you know, the guy would just, he just thought he was going to win and he should have gotten a, been getting a spot from somebody, Keith or somebody, I don't know. And he kept losing and losing and losing. And, his, and De Liberto wrote it, said, says, you know, Danny says, you know, Grady, don't you think you should ask for a spot? And he says, if I can't beat him even, I don't want to win, you know, or something. Yeah. So, and it was, he's, he was extremely stubborn. And Grady would but, put it, and Grady would bet his own. Oh, always. I mean, he would ship it. And, well, he, and he, he wasn't trying to make a phone call and get up 20 guys no, to no, bet. No, 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 I no. Mean, you know what his biggest hit is. If he didn't have it, you know, he wouldn't bet it. But if he had it and he liked it, he would send it in. Well, I'll tell you how strong he played. Because, uh, you know, everybody thinks of him as a one-pocket player. But he, was, he won a couple strong nine-ball tournaments. But I think his biggest score was, and I'm not sure of all the players, but it was Plattis and Keith, mm -hmm. I think, and Grady and somebody else were partners. 25000 a game nine-ball. And I think Grady said he ran like five racks. It's a famous match. I think it's even posted. I saw parts of it. I've never heard of that. Yeah. 25000 a game yeah. nine-ball? Yeah. yeah, they were. It was when Harry and Keith and those guys, they were huge bets. And he runs four or five racks for that kind of money. That's that's a little sporty. I wouldn't be able to chalk the cue stick for that kind of money. Unless I was playing you. That's crazy. I mean, that's you're 125000 stuck without hitting the ball. If a guy runs five back. I think there was about a $300,000 swing in that match. Ooh. There's some people, somebody in the chat will say, oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that match. It'll come up because it's it's been... It's 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 been around. It happened 15, 18, 20 years ago, and it was probably in the Northwest because that's where Plattis and uh, you know West Coast and you know who knows. Anyhow, we we're, we're going to miss Grady a lot, and uh, there's the services are Saturday. Uh, we're we're still having the U.S. Open one pocket, obviously, and uh, we're dedicating this year's uh, tournament to the memory of Grady Matthews, and we'll be trying to do some special little things for him and for his memory, but. You know, there's only there's not a, there's not another one walking down the street. No. I mean, he he was a one of a kind. <laughs> Sometimes people and say, "Thank goodness." You know, I would I was, I thought about it. You know, uh, I I really would like to see somebody do a Grady Matthews Memorial Tournament because uh, you know it, it's easy to say it's a hell of a lot of work and somebody's got to come up with some money. But I think yeah. uh, you know. I think if the interest is there for one pocket, um, you know they're doing a four thousand dollar added tournament over at California Billiards Club yep, this next weekend. week. Or next weekend, uh, yeah. You know it's four grand. They're, I guess they've got a good field already. You know, I gotta believe somewhere somehow it would make sense somewhere somebody to scrape up five ten grand and do a you know because yeah. uh, to me I think Grady is is. He needs to be remembered in a yeah. proper way. You know, I mean, yeah. well, look, and I'm not trying to change things or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, Jay Swanson was a well-known player. Mm -hmm. and we're, we're having, this year is the 16th, we had the 16th Jay Swanson Memorial Nine Ball Tournament, and it's the biggest tournament on the West Coast. It's one of the biggest tournaments in the country. Uh, and, I mean, Jay Swanson was a hell of a guy, and this is his home area and everything, but Grady was, I think, was had a bigger career, had more impact on the game, was more influential in a lot of things. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, I mean, so, Grady I mean, was, you never know when he, you say, let's start a memorial, because here, I mean, here's Jay Swanson. We just had the 16th. Yeah. yeah that's a yeah. long time. No, I know. I know. I understand. You know, I've and, do, I've and, done and, every one of them. And, except, you know, and the, me, and but Jay's the thing, of, the thing of the Swanson yeah. was, is, is it's, uh, what I think keeps that tournament alive is it is from his area. Correct. You know, it is in his area. It started in where, San Diego. We had to move it because we needed a bigger right, room. Right, but it's yeah. Southern California. Yep. Yep. And, and, you know, to this day, I, I would bet that half of the people that play in that tournament probably knew Jay Swanson. There's a lot of them. So there's there's so know. many people that are absolutely, I should have a plaque for them, mm -hmm. been in every tournament, mm -hmm. played in every single one of them. Yep. You know? That's and, pretty impressive, but Jay had that kind of... Yeah. impact on people. Right. And, and I think, so did Grady. And I think Grady, no, Grady, Grady did too. Yeah. And it to me, that's one of the, the things about a sport or a game is, you know, you have to remember the greats and you have to honor the people who, you know, gave more than they took. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing about pool. There's a lot of people that take out of pool and don't give a whole lot back. Oh, there are, there are. There but are. Uh, Grady wasn't that guy. I mean, he 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 put he gave back with all his heart, and I witnessed him go above and beyond 
where he had no Wherever shot. Wherever he went, yeah. he went. He, you know, I mean, he was an ambassador. He really yeah, was. He got a little crotchety, and I don't want everybody to think yeah. he's, uh, you know. No, I mean Grady you know. could get fired up and pissed off. Don't oh, yes. get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, he could when great. Like I said, when yeah. you said he could be stubborn, and and when Grady felt like he was right, then, you know, and, and the thing about Grady was, he's going to tell you. He yeah, <laughs> he could tell you, and, and yeah. you know that tact and things like that, you know. But there were some things that he was really wronged on. And I'll tell you sure, to him. Yeah. He should have been in but, you know, nominated we all, we all, for, for the BCA Hall of Fame. Yeah. And he should have been invited to that that the one that blew everybody's the court with that straight pool tournament that yeah. that uh, um, Randy Goldwater was involved mm -hmm. in Charlie. It was the second or third one they did. And it, it made they get, it was they embarrassed Grady. They were wrong. Well the other thing too that's that I think ancient history now. Yeah, the thing that, you know, some yeah. Some people who didn't know Grady, you know, Grady had, I don't know if you'd make a, call it a mistake or maybe just didn't quite understand the dynamic. But And I've seen a lot of people uh, maybe that are not as internet savvy um, understand how certain things come across in a forum or, or, or in a printed word. Because I remember there was a couple of threads where, you know, Grady, had a lot of you know he, there was some real animosity flying back and forth, yes, and was. people were saying you know go whatever and and the thing go win was, a qualifier yeah, yeah and and I understand I understand so that I. point of view too yep. and some people were saying why are you coming here you know complaining or what's this got to do with anything and you know I understand Grady's point of view I just I, I think that's one of those things and to me that those few threads were kind of unfortunate. Because yeah. you know, I agree with you because it's going to leave a bad. Taste, well, bad for memory. certain people, you know, yeah. I mean, the people yeah. that knew Grady and who experienced, you know, had experiences with him in real life, you know, or understood the type of man he was, he just brushed that off. But uh, you know, I, I don't think it would. I don't think it in any way. You know, tarnished his. Yeah, no, 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 not to me. Yeah. Because to me, you know, seeing him get on there and fight, that was Grady. Well, you, you know, know I, I mean, people don't understand that. When he came to Alaska, mm -hmm. he tried to run 100 balls a day. He'd just throw the balls out. He wouldn't set up a break shot. Mm -hmm. He'd just throw the balls out. And his first inning, he did 75. This mm -hmm. is cold. He just, eh, this is what I try to do every day. And, you know, and somebody posted, I don't know if it's true, but it's on AZ Billiards. And you can't believe everything. 327, high run. That's pretty sporty. That's strong. That's crazy. <laughs> you know. How many 300 on, you know, ball runners are there? Not that many. Not many. So, you know, but I, I uh, just some of the stories, right, they were just hilarious. You know, I, I, uh, I'm the one that put Grady in action against Efren back in 93 uh, at hard times. Yeah. I, I have the, I have that the one poster, and only poster. It's and, framed. And it's, this poster is handmade. I meant handmade. to bring it down It here. looks like it was made. John Coleman made it, who was the tournament director it of was, It's times. cool. It's it's, it's cool. It's funky art. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's uh, sure. And uh, it was a race to 15. Mm -hmm. and I can. I still remember. I was down there. Of course, all the Filipinos. Well, you dude, want to bet no, more, this you is a good story. More? This is a good story, right? <laughs> tell yeah. them what happened. Yeah. Well. Well, tell pretty, them. Tell them the whole situation. Okay, we're playing a race to 15. Winner take all. 10,000 a man. That's Efren put up 10. Grady put up 10, which was mine. And it was a hard times. And uh, I don't think the table, they, they weren't these Ernesto tight pockets. They were just whatevers. We played on what would be now a table six. That's mm -hmm, the one right. closest to the bleachers, yep. right? Table, yeah, okay. And uh, um, so Grady wins the lag and he breaks on the first game and makes a ball and runs out. Man, I'm feeling good. Got him right where you want him. Efren hasn't even got him surrounded, boss. Got him stuck. <laughs> Now the end of the story is since we're playing to fifteen, the final score was fifteen to one. <laughs> <laughs> and the Efren, he he never missed a ball. This was a two day event, but Grady got his nose opened and he went to about ten or so the first night. And we were supposed to stop at seven or eight so he could get his win. You know, get you know that way. Yeah, you know, right. For as soon as first person got to seven, we we're supposed to start. But he he wouldn't. He didn't want to. Quit, so, <laughs> so <laughs> and actually, JJ has this filmed. Yeah, but he didn't wow. have permission from Grady to release it. And they got in a little pissing contest, but I may try to revive it because actually it was my money. So, right. but anywho, um, Efren never missed a ball, and he has these shots. I don't know what you call them, but it, you, you bank the ball into a, you know, you, your pocket's over here. You bank it, and it comes in and pinches off of a ball and goes in. 
He made three of those in the course of the day. I went. The first one was only like a foot, six inches, eight inches, whatever, from his pocket. Second one was in the middle of the rail. The last one he made, it was like three diamonds from Efren's pocket, banks it, pinches it, and the ball just dribbles in and goes in his hole. Never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like Efren before either. That was the first right. time I'd ever seen Efren. Really? Yeah. This is 93. This is 20 years ago. Not quite. 19 years ago. September of 93, I think it when is. When was Efren, in, when did Billy teach Efren how to play one pocket in Chicago? It couldn't have been it, too long before that. It's like that. a year before that or so. Yeah. Well, he came over for Reds in like 86, I think. Okay. So, as Cesar Morales. So, anyhow, um, and then after Efren lost, or after uh, um, um you know, I just, had, I, just, that, I just yeah. had an idea that would be kind of cool. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I want to spit fair. it out before I forget it. <laughs> We're going to be, everybody's going to be here in May. Yes, sir. Especially the one pocket guys. Yes, sir. And what about if we set up, yeah, what about if we set up just a great. little station with a light and one camera and a mic? Oh, that would be great. And just like have people sit down and tell Grady. That would tell be Tell a story about Grady. And, and I tell you, we got We some, can put it all together. That would be cool. And we've got a guy named Alf Taylor, Alfie Taylor, that wrote the mm -hmm. new book. Well, he was on, we went on the road with Grady before he was Grady. I'm, I'm talking 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. He's going to be here. We'll and do he's coming that. up with, with we'll San Jose that. Dick. I, I, will, I will set up. I will make that happen. And we're trying to put together some uh, um, memorial type of video or something that uh, will mm -hmm. be there for everybody. So actually, if anybody has any great footage or anything like that, will you please contact either get it to me. Actually, what's better than that is get it to Steve Booth or get it to you. It's yeah. got to go to Steve Booth because he's got a guy that's putting it together. It's Greg, Greg mm -hmm. Coe. Yeah. Callie, Callie Red is putting it together for yeah. us. and So we can just send, I don't know, just get it to me. I'm okay. easy to find, and I'll get it now, to where it goes. When's this deadline? Or? Well, they're, they're trying to put it together now. For what? For uh, his memorial service? Yeah. Okay. No, no, for our, for our, at our tournament. Oh, Just okay. so, so we have a, you know, so we can do a real nice, because, you know, listen, Grady, it was one of a kind, and it's, uh, and he had some great stories. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, and his sayings. I mean, just the, the term. with the, peril. Fraught with peril. <laughs> you know? Disco posted one on, uh. Facebook that uh, I'd never heard before, but sounds just exactly like Grady. And, and the quote was, this guy doesn't know what defense is. He would shoot at a medic boat. Oh, no, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think that's a great yeah. Oh, I, I bet it is. Uh, Where else is Disco going to get that? Disco's not that smart. But, but some of the funniest <laughs> things, and I, and I have to, just a couple little stories, but some of the funniest things, he's telling stories about, uh, oh, the funniest one, you're like, We're gonna, I'm going to play you for two bucks. Okay. So I beat you. He says, you beat me, or whatever. Okay, you beat me, and it's too much. You're bucks. making this up as you go? Yeah, or? no, no, no. So yeah, it's got to be. So I say, you want to double the bet? Play for four hours? And you say, sure. You figure, I'm, I'm going to get me, right? Uh -huh. You beat me. Want to play for eight? Yeah. 16? 32? When it's all go and done and over, I win a game. So I always know that. I win a buck. Yeah. So I win a buck off of, and there was no, nothing, and so the, so. You were thinking you were winning all this money. It was I, I didn't sell it right. Grady had no, you didn't. <laughs> Grady, yeah, it was, no, you it really didn't. It was a very funny story. <laughs> Last time I played Grady, you're not going to believe this, but I told him I wanted this is had to had to happen. Last time I played Grady was in Anchorage, and I spotted him the seven and the eight, playing nine ball. Okay, why did you do that? So I could tell people you I spotted him. Didn't win a game. Eight. Yeah. But, you know, but it, and that's true. You know, <laughs> so I can I can say yeah, I played him, spotted him the seven and the eight. So, but he was one of a kind. He uh, just and I really. Uh, well, hey, it happens. I was really glad that we got to see him in uh, at the Derby in January. You know, I was really happy to get to know him. So, all right, let's get on to better stuff. Tar twenty five. Wait, wait a minute. You got a new sponsor. Kamui Chalk. Yes, came sir. on board, and uh, it's not a skull cap, John. It's a tar hat. <laughs> so we have um, Simona's, OB, Q's, and Kamui for Tar 25. All the coverage at my event, which is the CSI uh, US mm -hmm. Open 1 Pocket 10 Ball, and Tar 26. Tar 25, 26, and Kamui. I just talked to John Bertone mm -hmm. today, 
and uh, he's on board. So we're excited about mm -hmm. that. They've been with us. You know, John goes, yeah. he's, does the he best he can. He stays on board with us. You know, he's doing a um, lot. He's not a huge, big old company. He's just a uh, Dude, I tell you what, out. the marketing that that guy does. He works his butt off. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he's got the best marketing in pool. Him and Predator. Yeah. I mean, but, and the thing about Kamui is he does pretty much all himself. Yeah. I mean, one man show. Yeah. Um, but uh, there was actually a thread, and this kind of amuses me. Did you see the thread about Kamui where... Why, why is it a scam? Tell no, me why yeah, it's yeah, a scam. Yeah, this, I only read that was that Cleary, Cleary story. Cleary, yeah, yeah Cleary, but, you know, he's you know, a troublemaker. Well, it's, you know, you've got these <laughs> damn, you know, anti... Kamui chalk jihadis well, out there that they won't spend anything on anything. No, they wouldn't. It's the same people who won't spend three dollars on a beer. Yeah, because or they, I like can buy Hanks, I can buy a six pack in a in yeah. the convenience store well, for Hanks four dollars. Well, free water in Denver. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's yeah. funny. That measurement's funny on that stuff. Yeah, but um, but that whole thing and my you know my point of view is this is like you know if you don't lose it it's a great it's not a bad deal at all well here's <laughs> there's there's a couple of points to me one why would you give a shit what anybody else spends their money on i guarantee you, everybody in here spends money on something somebody else is going to think is stupid sure and number two yeah. you know if you believe that it does what it says it does and i believe it does cut down on miscues i am thinking that it does um, i play so little it wouldn't make any difference but I... to me it's you know if you look at all the money you spend going to a pool tournament, if you're a guy who travels for pool tournaments, if you're going to come to Las Vegas for a pool tournament, you know, and you're going to you're going to spend five hundred dollars on an airfare, you're going to spend thousand bucks, five hundred thousand dollars on a hotel. If you're playing a pro event, you're going to spend five hundred dollars on an entry. You're two thousand dollars into this. Now, if you're at a match Hill Hill and you miss Q <laughs> on yeah. the bubble to get into the money. Or, or Big boo -boo. yeah. Now, don't you wish that if I mean, and I believe that it really does what it says it does. You do miss Q less, yeah. but you have to chalk less. But now, if you're that player and you believe in that product, wouldn't it be silly not to spend twenty five or thirty dollars? Like if you don't lose it, it'll last you. I mean, a piece of chalk would last me five years. Right. Even a heavy duty player, since you use it so little. It's still got to last him six months or a year, right? And you and, know, and to on, me, it's, $2 it's like two dollars a month. You, you know, I understand if you, you know, if you're happy with what Master is, more power to you, man. I mean, I don't like. I mean, I personally, I think Kamui Chalk works. Uh, there, to me, it does. It is a little dirtier. You know, I think it does it, mark it, the, the table and the balls a little bit. You but that's because most people use it. Use. Raj used it in our tournament, and it looked like it was, I call them puppy's feet. Yeah. It's like somebody put talcum powder, and, but and, that's because he used it like 10 times more than he's well, supposed to. Well, that's because he uses it like he used Master, and, that's, and I don't think that's, that, you know, to me, that's not, that's not what it's for. No, that causes problems. It doesn't yeah. solve problems, because right. now it, it mucks up everything. Right. No, he, he was, uh, yeah. But, wrong. I mean, it, I really believe that there's something to it. You yeah. know, I don't, you know, I'm... Well, I, if you I, believe it, we believe it. Well, no, I mean, I could be wrong, you know. And full disclosure, you know, John and Kamui are a sponsor yeah. of ours. But well, so is Tweetin to a tweak, to yeah. a tweak. But, well, you know, and, yeah. and, and Tweetin's is pretty much the standard. Yeah, and, master. You know, I and, mean... And all I know is I'd love to put uh, Kamui on every table, but we lose yeah. about 10 gross of chocolate. Oh, God, if you, put, if you put Kamui on every table? <laughs> well, number one, I don't think you could. I don't think they make that much. <laughs> I know. We lose so much chalk at our nationals; it's 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 insane. But I think we. How many cue balls do you lose? You know, I'm or not, do you lose eight balls? Uh, no, not that many. We do lose some cue balls, and it's always that towards the end. And I tell you, if we catch somebody stealing anything like that, guess what? Gone. They're gone. Yeah. And everybody's gonna know that why they're gone. Mm -hmm. Just not. You know, you, I, I'm I, I'm sorry. You have to make an example, but this is crazy. You know, people stealing cue balls, and one year we lost a ball off of each table. So the guy had a set. When it was all done with, he had a set, one ball at a time. Oh. Now how cheesy can you get? We've had we've had people. T we wow. <laughs> and we had a guy. When you come back and you're playing eight balls, what's wrong with that? You got a Sears Sears and Roebuck eight ball. There's somebody put the you know the funky ball. Uh. You know, I just I'm sorry, but you know that ain't right. Oh man. So, but chalk, we go through so much chalk that it's just stupid, and mm -hmm. it's people. Well, my pool room doesn't have any. Well, you know, come on. We can't supply the whole West Coast or the whole country with chalk off of one event. It's terrible. So, How many gross do you go through? 
Hey, I, I, we figured, let me see, it was, uh, what the heck was it? 144 in a gross. Mm -hmm. It was, it was something pushing 20 gross, I think. Seems like an awful big number. We have 300 pool tables. Two pieces of chalk is 600. That's, that's only four gross. That's not right. No, it, it was, it's, it's way too much. Oh, I know what it was. It was 3,000 pieces of chalk, and I'll tell you what it was. It was about a half a piece of chalk per person. So 3,000 pieces of chalk. Jesus. Yeah. So 20 can, gross? I, I can't remember how many gross is 20, is, is 3,000 pieces, but divide well, by 10 20 gross. Well, 10 gross is... 20 gross is... is uh, uh, it, that's 20 gross. Yeah. 10, yeah 150 10. pieces, if you round it off, right, 20 times yeah. is 3,000. So, yeah. Yeah, 20 gross, approximately. 3, yeah, that's pieces. like a half a pallet, man. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, that's well, a lot what? of chalk. It sounds... So then you take it, so you got 300 tables, and you're going through 3,000... 20 boxes of chalk. You're going yeah. th you've got 300 tables, and you're going through 3,000 pieces. That's 10, 10 pieces of chalk per table. You say, boy, that's a lot of chalk. Then we start Not real. No, I can But then you start, start saying, well, that's only half a piece of chalk per person. But you can come in in the morning, and you can just see people walking by and putting in your pockets. Yeah. You know, grab them four, five, six pieces. And, then, you know, if I catch them, just say, put it back. You know? I mean, we, it just, it's expensive to do a pool tournament of, on this scale. Anyhow, so um, what's a box of chalk cost if you had to buy it? Thirteen dollars? Oh no, you can't get it for that anymore. If you buy pallets, you might get it for fifteen, eighteen dollars, but the freight kills you. That's no freight. If you go and just order it from Mueller's or something, the freight's got to be as more than the chalk is. Yeah. That stuff is heavy. Yeah. So you know, so, so twenty-five, twenty dollars yeah, a box. Yeah, figures twenty-five bucks, buck. By probably. the time you can get it, yeah, where you want. Probably twenty cents a piece is what I kind of figured in my mind. Anyhow, uh, who's Tar 25? Let's refresh everybody. Let's get them pumped Mike up. Mike DeShane taking on Dennis Hatch. Yeah. The Hatchet Man. Yeah. Um, and these are races. To, uh, this is 10 ball. Race to 25. 25. Two out of three races. Yep. And it's presented by OBQs, sponsored by Simonis, Kamui, and yeah. Q Sports International. And this is our new format? New format. Uh, it's race to 25, two out of three sets. 4,000 to the winner, 1,000 to the loser. Um, winter breaks, magic rack, and these guys have. Uh, it's kind of the initial match of the new tar they're not, series. Let's that just we're put they're, they're not going to go have a milkshake when they get done. You don't think so? <laughs> no. Yeah, there's they, a, uh, there's some. They, there's they have some, some serious feelings about each other. They, they, this is, this is. They've been wanting, you know, this will give them the opportunity to settle some, some words that have been going back and forth, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, then, uh, the, and then that, and then we do that one, and then you tear down everything and go to the, tear everything down. the Riviera, and we do the U.S. Open one pocket yep. and the U.S. Open ten ball. Um, what's the, the numbers looking like on the U.S. Uh, Open? One pocket's still a little lighter than I like, but it's, it is what it is. It's forty-two paid, and you know when we say there's that's how many people, that's how many people are paid. We don't reserve spots for anybody. Forty-two in the one pocket and eighty-two in the ten ball. The limit is sixty-four and ninety-six. So I still expect I expect us to fill the ten ball. Right up to the last minute. There's always people that wait to the last minute. And, uh, eh, mid 50s on the one pocket. I think that'll be good. You Especially know, still, if it's the right 50. Well, you know, I, I brought a list of who it is. I mean, there's some pretty strong Cliff Joyner's playing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, all the all the monsters are. But Cliff sometimes doesn't, pay, sometimes doesn't pay, play in them. But, uh, you know. Uh, I'm more interested in one guy. Who? Come on, man. It's Billy in or what? You know, not yet. You know, you know, and Mr. Billy, you said you said you'd call me. Expect a call. <laughs> you know what are you, Publishers Clearinghouse? <laughs> you know, come on, get your butt in gear, son. Let um, me see the list. Let me see. Let me just run pocket. down yeah, some. You can, you let know. me here. Here we go. Oh, okay. Um, They're alphabetical. So here we go. Let me run some names for you here. This is U.S. This, Open one pocket. This gonna be good. Um, it's a nice little field. We got Darren Appleton, Glenn Atwell, Chris Bartram coming out to try his yeah. hand. Francisco Bustamante, Corey Duell, and hey, the most dangerous guy in the field, Lou Figueroa. <laughs> um, Scott Frost, Gentiles coming back. Yep. He had a hell of a run last year. Yep. Mika Eminen, hey, Bob Jewett, another killer. Bob Jewett's going to shock some people. Jeremy Jones, Cliff Joyner, uh, John Mora, 
Silver Ochoa, oh, whoa, Dennis Orcullo, Alex Pagule, and Jose Perica. Yeah. Boy, the peas are stacked. <laughs> yeah, you got the Ulrich boys. Yeah, Ike Runnels, John Schmidt, Brandon Schuff, Earl the Pearl Strickland. Get out of here. Bill Stroud. Bill Stroud's playing in both of them. Now, you know, I was reading Alfie Taylor's book, and at one time, Bill Stroud was the strongest player in that uh, Cotton Club, which is, I believe, in Houston, which is a... This is going back 30, 40 years, kind of before my time. That's cool, man. There's gonna be, well, he's he used That's to play cool. pretty strong. Yeah. So What know, a great field that is. Holy shit. The only shit. one we're missing is Efren. And uh, unfortunately, I believe you yeah, know, he's, he's not going to make it. He's got uh, prior commitments over there, and, and that's, it is what it is. We really wanted him, so. But it, you can't do everything. Um, Tunica's coming up. And that's starting to fill up as far as what's going on. Uh, there'll be more information. I don't want to give a whole lot of stuff, but... Uh, the nine foot stuff is just like the Derby City. The, the bar table, the amateurs uh, are across the street in a, in a, in a venue that where we can have juniors events. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing some juniors events. We're only doing singles. CSI and BCA Pool League do not have enough players in that immediate area to te have teams. Pretty soon you got too much screaming about who's a master and who's not. Sure. So we're doing singles. Then NAPA, which is the North American Pool Players Association, I think, they're doing teams somewhat. So uh, our event is the 20th through the 22nd, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then we're running a a events for everybody, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then the APA is coming in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And NAPA is going to be there the same time we are. There's going to be plenty of things for everybody to do. There's going to be more information coming, so just hang tough for the amateur stuff. We're, 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 not, gonna, we're not worried about that until we get through our nationals going on. Um, and when we were speaking of juniors, you know, we, we started a little junior program last year to try to do some special things from the juniors. And we have a, Justin's going to be putting up a, uh, some photos and everything of a beautiful Gina Q. Mm -hmm. It's probably 30 years old. Mm, so, yeah, no, uh, no, I don't think it's, no. no. I, I've it's had a newer some, Is it newer? I had some yeah. information on no, it. No, it's not. It's one of his yeah. newer production yeah. cues. It's since he came back. It's a 5.4 veneer cue, uh, yeah, steel a joint, yeah. uh, ivory butt cap. Uh, rosewood, rosewood into bird's eye, yeah. and it's got one of the nicest lizard wraps I've ever seen on any yes. queue. It's unbelievable how nice this wrap it's is. It's a nice stick. And it's it a was, beautiful queue. It was donated to us queue. to generate funds for our junior program, so we're going to be selling 30 tickets at $100 each. Yep, for the CSI Period. juniors, and uh, I will have the photos and some video of the queue up okay. soon. And then uh, Mark is going to straighten we're, out his payment, how he wants yeah, to Yeah, we got to make it so you can pay for tickets. it. So we won't do PayPal because we're not going to jeopardize the TAR account. So yep. um, when he posts the, the uh, video and everywhere, there will be a little information on how you can get a form. You can get it off our site or something like that. And you can fax it to us with payment or you can call us up and give us your credit card number. And we're going to start it off on, on, online and everything. But uh, we're only selling 30 tickets. And mm -hmm. when the 30 tickets are done, we will, we will pull the winner. And it will be available if they don't sell before our nationals, which I don't expect them to. We'll be selling them at our nationals. Sarah yeah. Rousey is going to be helping us with all our junior programs. We'll be doing some more junior fundraisers. And we're initially, we're eventually going to start off our uh, junior camp program, which is really cool, but it's too far down in the future. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be really nice. Um, and do you want to mention... Who gave the cue? Uh, no. Or does he not want to be? Yeah, it's not. A, you know, he he doesn't want a lot of. Uh, okay, but that's pretty it's cool, pretty man. It's pretty sporty. Somebody to give, just gave up a you know a, 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 a nice. A, 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 it's basically brand new. Yeah. One sh one shaft's yeah. been hit, yeah. uh, but one shaft is yeah. completely unhit. Yeah. Um, ivory ferrules, steel joint. It, it's, it's a nice a, stick. It's a beautiful cue, man. It is, and we had it last year. We got it last year, but we got it so close to the tournament, we were afraid mm -hmm. to try it starting anything because you don't want to. Half, half a raffle, right. you, know, you don't want to do that. So, but I think that's a good way to do it. Thirty bucks. I mean, for a hundred bucks for that cue, you know, somebody's going to win. I, a if I was it's eligible, real... <laughs> I would, I would get yeah. in it, but I can't, obviously, for different, yeah. for obvious reasons. It's a real collectible. But uh, you know, for a hundred bucks, it's a chance to really win something. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So we'll have all yeah. the information. It's a little on the lighter side, eighteen and a half ounce, isn't it? It is. Well, yeah. one shaft is eighteen six. One shaft's nineteen one. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you keep staring over there. Is there anything? Anything? Uh, you I'm just looking. One guy to? asked, uh, "Is Diamond in? Is Diamond going to be at the Moscone Cup this year? Table? 
Are they going to be using another diamond You know, I table? can't answer that question. First of all, because that's in England. Right. I know there were some negotiations going on, but uh, uh, um, it's not just one event when you negotiate with Matchroom. You have to have a table in England. Well, you have to have three tables in England, one for the sh mm -hmm. arena and two for the practice. I think you have to have same amount probably in Philippines for that Masters thing, and then they're trying to do something else. They want like 15 of them. So but you start shipping 20 tables across the world, it starts getting expensive. Yeah. So I honestly do not know. Right. That's not my, uh, that's a Chad thing, and well, we'd and love the, to have it. Sure, but the other thing is, you know, it's all well and good, you know. It's always good to, to do your brand, but you know, I've always been of the mind that why spend a lot of money to promote your product somewhere you can't sell your product? That's true. You know, if somebody in Taiwan said, God, I want a diamond table, that's beautiful, but you can't. You can't. It's pretty tough. Well, you know, there's yeah. five of them in the Philippines. That, yeah. uh, that big time billiards is played on a diamond. Mm -hmm. uh, Efren has a diamond. And, uh, you know, in Europe, we're $15, selling. $15,000 diamonds? <laughs> By the time you, yeah, I don't. Uh, in Europe, we've sold container loads, just like the Scandinavian countries. I think there's, yeah. a, there's a distributor over there. He's gone through quite a few of them. And they've got it down now where they send them broken down. Mm hmm. So it's a lot easier to ship and handle, and because they don't use fifty-three foot containers, a lot of those places are twenty foot containers, and uh, it's amazing. The freight's just not as high as you think it would be. Now you're not sending one piece slate tables either, right? Oh yeah, I think so. Really, pro ams? Yeah. I I can't swear to that because I don't do that, mm -hmm. but uh, I think mm -hmm. they might even have the sh the slate might even be drop shipped to them. You know, separate shipping. From so the, don't they finish the slate at the, at the plant with the holes and everything? No, 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 no. So the slate's, the slate's all, all done, all finished, yeah. drilled. And yeah, it's ready to rock and roll. Okay. And the tables, I believe, are being. Does it come from Italy or South no, America? No, this is Brazilian. Okay. We use Brazilian slate for a couple of reasons, uh, price being one. But the main reason is, and I'm the because it's a one-piece slate. You want it rigid. You don't want it. F you see, Italian slates have much higher water content. It's much more flexible. When you're spanning that big of an area, right, even though want. even though it's supported everywhere, you want it as rigid as possible. Now, there's there's no risk there, and if you drop it, it might break easier than three piece or than Italian slate. Right. You're not dropping it. Yeah. If you do, you buy a new one. But right. you know you just you shouldn't have dropped it. Shouldn't have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's in a damn table, ninety nine percent of its life. <laughs> so that's good. But uh, we've been we've been uh, using uh, Brazilian for I don't. Seven eight years, I think. Okay, uh, you know, I didn't know that. But the one piece fact. I know is Brazilian. The three piece might, you know, vary at times. <coughs> I will bring up one other thing that we looks like we're uh, a go on, and that's that uh, CSI is in, involved in putting on an event in China. It's an artistic pool. It's sixteen invited players. Twelve are from around the world, and four of them are Asian. And uh, we just put out the invites uh, starting yesterday. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be on TV. It's going to be, uh, we're trying to promote and get some things going in China that will have some longevity. It's WPA recognized because um, it's, since it's invite, it's really not a sanctioned event. Although I think it actually might get sanctioned status. And so this is the first of, uh, of many. It's July 13th through 15th, which doesn't affect hardly anybody so out there. So it's a trick shot show. Yes. But it's, a, it's an altered program. It's, it's just a little, it's not... It's something because the Chinese, you have to work through the way they do things. They have a whole division that's called the small ball. They have a, like a sports division. And this whole division coordinates who does what in the different cities and all these things. And every event they do has to have the name world in it. I don't have any reason why. I wish they'd understand. So this is actually called the World Class Artistic Pool Master Cup. If you can say it, you can play in it. No, but it's... It's uh, for what American players are going over. Uh, you know, I don't have the list with me, but uh, there's about six. Mike Massey. Mike Massey is master of ceremonies, oh, cool. and he's going to be coordinating. This is actually going to be really a cool event. And I'll bring mm -hmm. some more information in it on it uh, as it gets a little further along. It's not until July. He's master of ceremonies, but they actually are going to have like a press night. When you do things in China, yeah, you get every government official there, so they're going to be learn how to do little trick shots and, and they're going to get awards and everything. It's really, it's for media, it's for mm -hmm. this and it's for that. Uh, every referee is going to be an accomplished trick shot person. Um, 
uh, I, it, it, it's our way of maybe opening the door of getting some things into China. You know, China's a huge market. I don't want to take everything over there. Oh, We're supposed to be doing a 10-ball event over there by the end of the year. Yeah. Big 10-ball event. This is a precursor. If it works, then we'll go forward. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're kind of excited about it. And for, for uh, uh, artistic standards, this is a huge event. Um, all the players get their expenses paid, number mm -hmm. one, up to $2,000 per person. Can you get the China for two yeah. grand? Yeah. Especially if some places it's cheaper than from the U.S. Mm -hmm. So then I guess it, they'll average it out or whatever. The prize fund is about $28,000. Now, in most artistic events, their world event was $6,000. The one at Allen Hopkins was the world event. I think it was $6,000 added. Wow. So, it's, I mean, it's a much different world. And these guys world. get more ESPN coverage than anybody. No, this doesn't. That's trickshot no, magic. That's yeah, a different, but that's Matt Braun's thing, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, but this is, this is going to be really cool because they have, they have $1,000 for the best-dressed player, $1,000 for the most entertaining player, thousand dollar prize for the most engaging with the officials and so there's everybody's got a chance to win some money and mm -hmm. that's big money for these guys and it gives it it's going to widen out the the appeal i heard it was on az billiard somewhere that um i imagine nathan's the one that posted it because he did that venom tape and that somehow somebody bootlegged a copy and put it on their their version of youtube and it had in one month had five million hits in china He's like a star over there, and mm -hmm. he'll be playing in this too. That's These cool. are mostly That's the good, top, good. mostly the top rank. But we, we brought in uh, Florian is not in the he's number twenty three, but he doesn't compete in a lot of them because he's doing other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting because there's a, yeah, people that follow this industry. There's there's been friction between some of the players and this and that. And I have there's some issues, but we're hoping this will bridge a lot of the issues. There's uh, two or three APA league operators are active in this artistic pool, and we're making sure that they come because maybe we can get everybody to work together a little bit better. Okay. You know, hey, right. we this industry needs help. So All right. our trick shot pool hours. Uh, yeah. No, I understand. I understand. It's just interesting, and it's a small market. <laughs> I hate trick shots, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I just I don't. Yeah. If it was, if they're, if they were real trick okay. shots, like Mike Massey style trick okay. shots, and there's no, no swinging triangles, yeah, none of that that's stuff's what allowed. I don't like. No, that, none of that it's stuff's allowed. When you allowed. see a guy roll in, he's got a wheelbarrow full of shit, yeah. the, and not, it takes no. him ten minutes to set up this, yeah, and you know, six Walter Mitty device. No, those, none of those are going. That's you one know. of the conditions. None of that crap. But now you start talking about stroke shots and stuff like that. My attitude, my, my, my okay, definition of a trick that. shot is if it could be used in a game. Yeah. That's and and nothing annoys me more. It just It's like so. to see a guy set up a shot five times and never make it. <laughs> well, it's like, fuck, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can set up some shots and yeah. miss it and say something yeah. cute and then miss it again and say something else cute. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm real, I'm, I don't know, I'm just cynical and I'm. I know you are. Pool's not, you know, I just. I'm cool. looking at this as a step. No, I understand why you're doing it. it. Yeah, it, it makes this sense. Could, this could really and lead into And from a business point of view, it makes a lot of sense. No, this just, could really lead into something. Yeah. And if it works good for CSI, then it'll work good for the pool world because that's just the way I'm built. So. Uh, we never did say much about TAR 26. You know, we talked about TAR 25. It's uh, my boy against your boy. Is that what it is? What's that? TAR 26. That's a joke. TAR 26. TAR 26 is, is one. Shoot. What day is that? It's 25th. 25th. That's 26th. after all of our national events. Yep. It's going to be the biggie. I'm still working on all the graphics and shit for that. I got yep. behind this week, but uh, that'll be up soon. And uh, That's the monster. That's one people have wanted to see for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Mark Griffin versus Justin. Yep. Finally going to happen. <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> no, it's Shane Van Boning versus Johnny Archer. Ten mm -hmm. ball. Race to 25, two out of three. A four and an eighth inch pocket diamond. Yeah. And um, by the time that rolls around, we'll have our... By the time that tournament happens, or by the time that match <laughs> happens, we'll have... This will have more play on it. It'll be... Oh, it's going to be double tough. But by the, we'll, we'll have it figured out exactly. Because this is all part of the, part of the TAR Challenge Series. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a... Uh, I always said think boxing. It's going to be oh, yeah. a ranking system. 
and uh, it, it and possibly I, evolve into a king of the hill where yeah. you have to knock the top uh, guy off. You know off. what? I think we, you know, we've been trying at this, and I think we've just overthought it. You know, you can get carried away with this and this. I think we just need to do what you said. You know, we need to put our heads together, figure it out, come out with a list. Say, look, oh, it's gonna, yeah. Here's a list. You beat this guy, you move up. Yeah. You know, and then ideally. You know, it's not outside the realm of possibility. We can put it together, and, you know, we keep getting the support from sponsors and, and, and from, you know, the fans. Mm -hmm. If the fans support it, you know, my, personally what I would love to be able to do is have some sort of either year-end points fund or the top four guys get the playoff at the end of the year yep. for a prize fund. Of, you know, something. Something, you know. Well, if we can get some sponsorship, we'll add some more money. But this is, this yeah. is a start, and... Well, we'll say it. I know it was beat to death on a couple of threads on AZ. You know, this is an honest to goodness, for real event. Anybody does any funny stuff, is going to find themselves watching. They're not playing. Yeah, they'll and, be they'll be ostracized from every event I have anything to do. Yeah, with. and it's know, a, I because some people are real. You know, they're anal about, about that, but that's fine. You know, yeah. I understand if, if you don't like yeah. it, or if you think if you're worried that there's just two guys up here not trying, then don't buy it. Yeah. You know. Because I don't want to have to listen to you cry, but you know I know what it is, and I we'll think we'll know. Just kind of like you said, if a guy's stupid enough to to yeah, jeopardize to his livelihood for a thousand dollars, he's stupid enough to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. That's all. It'll happen. And the other yeah. thing is, these guys that we're putting in these matches, especially the matchups we're trying to make, you know. These aren't second tier players. They want to win. Yeah. These are the best players in yeah. the world. There's you a know? lot of ego. It's a lot of ego. And that's part of this format is, mm -hmm. you know what? Now, these guys don't have to ask a backer if they can play. No. They don't have to go out and get 10 grand to take a match. You yeah. know, I mean, this is it. This is the first time, really, where, you know, that I can think of in this country, long format, one on one. Get in there and try, and and you're gonna you're guaranteed to well, make some money. You don't hear any yeah. comments about uh, the thing over in the Philippines that big time billiards about. They're doing business. They're yeah. not doing business over and, there. And to me, you know That's, what they're doing over there is cool. It's, it's yeah. kind of similar to what we're doing. It's only a mini, it's mini version, one race. To they're nine. flipping coins, kind of, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. You know, so, it's that's more of a thing yeah. to where. You know, and the, and the prize difference isn't as much. I think it's 5000 and 2500 So, actually, in our match, they're playing for more money between yeah. first and second. Well, they get actually, uh, theirs is actually on TV, and they got a huge sponsorship base. So, Which is kind of funny to me. If, it, if, if it's on TV, and they've got a big sponsorship base, and they're only playing for $2,500 more a match than I know. Yeah. It makes you wonder. Yeah. So, you know, it, either way, uh, I'm excited about it, because I think it is going to prove some things. And... What I really like about it is the unknown factor, meaning Br Brandon Schuff wants to play on us. Right. Now, he and wants to play here. And now, what you know what's going to happen? Guys like Brandon Schuff, we're going to be watching to see who wins these little regional tours and the yeah, and turning yeah. stones and how they do here and there. They're not going to say, I'm going to do some business with you because it'll stop them from yeah. getting to this yeah. level. So yeah. it has that that second tier stuff that keeps and it, it, exactly. it lays the groundwork. I'm it's I'm, I'm excited about it because I'm convinced it's the way to fly, and that's what yeah. we're flying. Yeah. And you know, and we're putting time, effort, money, and you know, I I think people are going to like it. And, and it's one thing, um, you know, we'll talk more about in the following weeks and leading into May. Sure. And uh, it's something you're going to see a lot of in May. Is we're going to have the list done. We're going to have kind of our format or rules if you will um yeah and you know it's just going to be we've been talking about this for two years pretty much and we had a super formal structure and all this well, stuff. we made a presentation to two casinos and yeah. we ended up banging our head against the wall i mean and they just wouldn't they didn't get it yeah just didn't and get it so i think so, the thing yeah. to do is we just we're just going to do it yeah we're going to do it and then it goes back to uh it's funny, I was reading, it's a book about leadership, and it was a military book, and a guy was talking about, um, in today's culture, you know, the Lewis, in today's culture of leadership and today's culture of corporate, how things are done, the Lewis and Clark mission never would have happened. Yeah, right. You know, if you tried to go to the moon today, it, in, the same, in, the, in the type of, you know, the, the, leadership the, the, and risk-averse culture we have today, they yeah, never would have went to the moon. 
Never would have done it. Uh, and no. um, but especially the Lewis and Clark. Some of these, yeah. <laughs> and that's <laughs> we're going that way. <laughs> and this book was a, a book of leadership principles <laughs> by an Army Special Operations former officer. And he ca he called something. It's called an expeditionary mindset. And it's if you look at how Lewis and Clark and even the the Moon program. Um, there was a lot of national pride pushing that. Yeah, program. but it with the Moon program, I watched Chris Kraft was one of the driving forces on the uh, mission control, and he's got a great interview mm -hmm. with MIT. Uh, they bring in all the different different. It's but it's a lecture he gave at MIT to a group of engineering students. And one of the things he talked about was when, you know, when Kennedy said we're going to the moon in, what was it, 61 or yeah. 60 or whatever, he said, we had no clue. We, we, we at didn't that know time, where it was. At that time, <laughs> they had like one hour of space flight. Yeah. They had no idea what, how, they had no Nothing. clue no. how to get there. That's like me saying I'm going to run 500 balls. Yeah. No, actually, I'm closer to running 500 balls. We were than they going to moon. the moon, and it's a similar <laughs> so, thing with the Lewis well, and Clark mission. Well, and going back mm -hmm. to the original thing, and that is that expeditionary mindset: is look, we're going to take, we're going to prepare ourselves the best we can. We're going to marshal as much resources as we can, and then we're going to trust ourselves that we can figure shit out as we go. Yeah, you know what I mean. We'll make a good decision, make the best decision possible, what the circumstances permits, and just keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe we don't end up where we want to go, but we're gonna go. Through, we're gonna get somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, you know. So that's what we're gonna do with this this new format. We're yeah. just, you know, we're gonna give it a shot. Well, I'm excited about it. it it's gonna it's gonna tell us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. you know? It's gonna tell us if if people are willing to pay for good quality matches. It'll tell us if. Somebody in America is willing to respect, and you know, if we ever would ever just latch onto some sponsor guy that says, "Man, I like what these guys are doing," we can set the world on fire, the yeah. pool world. Yeah, it doesn't take that much. And, well, and, yeah, I mean, and, it's and, not a great and, deal of money in the grand scheme of sports when you start talking no. about the best in the world. It's but we are establishing credibility. There will be no no. Yeah. This is a hundred percent on the square, and you can take that to the bank, and yeah, you know, and, and, it's, and, it, you and know, just just please. I hope nobody challenges us on that, but you know no. what's going to happen. Well, Eventually, something's going to happen. To me, it's not even a question. You know, yeah. it's you just don't do it. Yeah. And the other thing is, it's I'm excited about it because it gives us, and it's something I think the players like. Every player I spoke to about it, and I and I explain it to them like this. I say, you know, this is something that's going to set the true pros apart. Because that's one of the jokes in the pool world is there is no pro pool in the United States. Yeah. Any swinging dick can go pay his five hundred dollar entry fee. Yeah, play in anything. And play in anything. Yeah. They can play in my tournament. Right. Exactly. We still so guess what? Spots. You can't play in these. <laughs> no. You got to earn your way. You in earn your these. way. Yeah. You know, you you can't just come show up and play in yeah. this. So. And, and we're going to be picky. And, and you know, it's going to be you know, some people have said, well, you guys, what you don't let guys, certain guys play, or you or it's talk the Shane about Shane Show or whatever. So, you know, there's a lot of things. But there, you know, well, it was a Shane Show for a lot of reasons, mainly because he always had money and he would always play. He'll play anybody. And he's, he's fearless. Yeah. So, That's, but that was know. the old format, you know. So yeah. now. You, you're going to see, you know, one of the reasons you, you, you know, you're going to see a lot more players now, and hopefully you're going to see some interesting matchups. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I, I mean, I, and I'd love to see. I, I have a broader vision than Justin does. I want. I'd love to see some straight pool in one pocket. But the problem oh, being, yeah, as long great. as we're pay per view, yeah, it won't got draw. It. Well, but that's where sponsors comes in. Yeah. No, I if would love to get see a sponsor. It too. I would love. I mean, to look see at this. It. Let's say a sponsor comes in and say, "Hey, you know something? I'll sponsor." Efren and Scott Frost playing in one pocket for uh, no right, whatever, and here's yeah. here's fifteen thousand dollars. You play the players, you pay all your staff, and this, and you make it free. Sure, you know, there's no telling how many viewers are going to pop up on that. So mm -hmm. that's a that could happen. That's not that far of a fetch. No, I mean that's you know? well, that's something else too. Is if a you know, you know, if somebody wanted to do a match, and once again, it's part of that expeditionary mindset. Yeah. You start forward, and then hopefully, you know, you build it, and they will come. You know, I mean. Well, this is the exploratory. What you exactly. call it right here yeah. is the studio. Yeah. And, uh, and we've been here about ten months. And yeah. We've, we've made some. Yeah, we've done some good matches. About, it's mean, time to go. We're, you know, this take, podcast. Yeah, we're jumping again. You know, we're yeah. we're at eighteen podcasts now. Well, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> but I mean, really, that's and we, and that's we're part gonna, of it. You know, after the tournament, we're going to get a little more polished. And I'd like to bring some outside guests in, and we yeah. we just haven't. 
In all honesty, you know, Justin and I, we talk maybe once or twice, and boom, I show up 15 minutes before 6, and away we go. Mm -hmm. We're winging it. I understand there's a lot to be said for off the cuff and informal, but there's a lot to be said for planning, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're just trying to keep things alive, keep things going, and, and, and bring everybody up to speed on, on the latest. And you know. All right. Uh, we are... All right, just right say goodbye. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me see if we've got any questions. Well, again, I, just everybody uh, think of Grady a little bit this uh, next couple of days, and um, that's uh, all I got to say on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, condolences to Grady's family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a sad week, sad time, yeah. you know, for any pool fan, anybody. I, I don't know anybody that doesn't have a Grady story. Whether, <laughs> that's true. Really? really? Don't yeah. know anybody that doesn't and have a Grady Listen, story. your idea of getting, to get, getting them together and recording, yes. that is, that's great. You know, we tried a similar thing. That's where Diane Hoppy got her, the mm -hmm. stories of the legends or something, which I was instrumental I just, in that happening. But my, my plan, thinking about it, is I want to set up, just basically we'll put it in a corner. Sure. One light, camera, no mic, to where a guy can just sit down. And talk. Turn the camera on, tell me a story about Grady. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's, we're going to do that. Yes, sir. So. Well. Um, um, once again, special yeah. thanks, uh, John Bertone, Kamui, uh, mm -hmm. for coming on board with us. Thank you, John. And we okay. appreciate your support. And as always, OBQ's, uh, Simonis, all, all these guys Simonis coming on board yeah. for, always for May. Yeah. And I can't, I can't thank OB, you know, I can't thank OB and Kamui enough. Because they have supported us, and they have helped us, you know, they put their money where their mouth is. Every and event. It's just, you know. You know, and some of these things. It, are, it, I, it, it means a lot to yeah. us because it's not yeah. easy doing stuff. And, and, and the other thing is, you know, the people who buy all our matches, who, who support our stuff, you know, thank, thank all of you because it's, you know, I, it's just I really appreciate it. It allows us to do some things that, you know, Nobody else can really do because we've got the support and the backing of a group of people, you know, who believe in what we do and we're fearless. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it it it's, yeah, well, it, it helps to know you you know you you've got yeah. a group of people that are going to back you up. Well, the only thing so. I'll say is it's it's interesting because when I went out to Super Billiards Expo, I mean, I had twenty people come up and say, "Man, I, I didn't know him from Adam," mm -hmm. but they recognized me. Says those, I watch everyone. Keep doing it. Mm -hmm. You guys are great. That's all we need to hear. Yeah, appreciate but, it. But we do appreciate it, and that's uh, you know next week I won't be here. You're yeah. on your own. Let's we'll see have to we can figure get to that somebody. out. Yeah. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah, and uh, we'll know. do something. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Thank you very much. Thanks. And and that's it. We'll talk to you later. Yep.